Morning. I'm sure lots of beautiful people. Well, I think we are all in. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, uh, the first virtual seminar that Jack organizes. Um, obviously, and considering the times, the theme of this seminar had to be uh, the pandemic. Um, we initially, this seminar was uh, uh, designed as a, a, a small alternative to uh, uh, the, the now existing only next year event, the Select Congress. Um, the Jack board met somewhere in, in April and we thought it would be a, a good idea to try and design an event that could help the schools in reflecting how they had reacted to the, the pandemic. Actually, we are still in the middle of this. So I think that all lessons that will be presented today uh, are things that probably are still being implemented. Uh, we designed this seminar as an opportunity for reflection and discussion around the very broad topic of how film schools coped during the pandemic. Uh, we have a number of panels organized throughout the day to reflect upon this topic. And for the opening session, we've invited uh, Bruce Sheridan, the, the, the president of SELECT, Stanislav Semedji, I never know how to pronounce your name, Stan, <laughs> the executive director of SELECT. And obviously we also uh, uh, invited live Jensen, the, who was the chair of the Oslo Congress and who will be leading that Congress next year to, to also talk to us uh, a little bit about the conference, uh, the Congress next year, but also uh, uh, some reflections on the topic. So without any further delays, we'll start. I would like to ask Bruce to open the, the seminar today. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Manuel. Good, good. Well, I'm going to keep saying good morning. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. here in Chicago. So um, uh, I hope I don't look too tired and uh, worn out. Uh, but um, thanks for doing this. I, I, I think this is a wonderful thing. Siba uh, did a, a virtual uh, conference a couple of weeks ago and um, uh, there was a different kind of event, but I think we are in the beginning of the process of starting to function again the way that um, that we like to function, although not using the mechanisms that we that we would normally use. Um, so I'm going to first of all say a few thank yous and then just a few words of kind of encouragement and um, and then leave it to you all to have the discussion that you, that you need to have. So obviously to put this together uh, was really a task that fell to the regional council. So I really want to thank the whole um, JECT council, uh, Manuel, Lindsay, Lindsay Dutty, uh, Elibo and Guido Lukashek for doing this. Uh, also I've learned over the last few days that um, Anna Coutinho is a big part of <laughs> making this happen, certainly of making it possible for me to um, participate. So I want to pre, I want to say thanks to you all. Um, I also want to thank um, Life Post Jensen for being here. Um, I know he would be anyway as a member, but uh, the work, the effort that, that Life and his team put in to planning um, a, a Congress and conference, a biennial Congress and conference that hasn't happened yet but will happen if, uh, if, if we possibly can make it, uh, was extraordinary. They went through the whole process of putting it together in terms of figuring out with the Executive Council what it would be, what it could be, uh, calls for proposals, uh, plan for how um, presentation proposals would be assessed, and only to have to join a meeting of the Executive Council, which life was part of, but also his, the Dean, um, Jorn Mortensen. Um, and we had a, a very thorough and somewhat difficult discussion. I mean, difficult in the sense that we would have preferred not to have had it. And then unanimously uh, came to the conclusion as we had to, that um, we could not go ahead with, with that Congress uh, as planned, uh, which would be happening right now pretty much. But um, 
you know, we're very confident that that uh, that we can make this happen a year from now. Life's holding his thumb up. Um, of course, it isn't entirely in our control as much as I'd like to think that we control the world. Um, it's not the case. So anyway, uh, thank you all. Um, just a, f a few words about the context. You know, it, it seems to me important to remember that SELECT is the only association of its kind of higher education across cinema, audio, visual and media schools in the world. And when you have global pandemics, being a global organization means something. It always does, but it means something even bigger when you have the whole world uh, caught in this kind of situation. But from my point of view, the organization exists and functions best um, when it's built on and driven by regional discourse. It's, um, it's that energy at the regional level that uh, can be used to promote exchange across levels. It makes for the horizontality of, of the organization rather than it being a vertical hierarchy. It makes for the idea that we're all in this together and we are knowledgeable and um, also challenged in ways that are parallel and, and, and equivalent rather than in ways that are, are, are separated. So this, um, this is what gives life blood really, the regional function is what gives life blood to Select's mission. Um, and so we, we do this by the way we establish standards and ways of, of functioning. And um, this discussion that you're about to have um, is, is one of those ways. I mean, how do we do this? We are, most of us are in the middle of it. And it's, what is it today? It's Tuesday morning. Two days from now, I will go back into the studio for the first time with my directing students. We'll all be at least six feet apart. We'll have masks on. Um, everything will be wiped down and uh, disinfected and ultraviolet lights will be everywhere. It's, um, we'll have to light our scenes with this in mind. Uh, something I would never have guessed in mid-March when, when I was last in the studio um, teaching people how to direct film. So um, the, the discoveries that people have made already, the discoveries that will be made in the near future and the challenges that we all face um, are, uh, are real and they're present now and they are ongoing. So um, I, I will just finish by saying thank you for taking the time to participate in this. Thanks again for setting it up to the, to the regional council. Um, I know that life is going to talk um, about um, Vespadales and what you know uh, that side of things, but um, uh, I want to make sure that everybody is clear that our intention is to be at the Congress in Oslo a year from now, um, the virus permitting and, and uh, international laws permitting. Um, and wish you all the very best for this. I will stick around for a while. I won't stay forever because I have a, a nine o'clock meeting and I probably need to get a couple more hours sleep before, before that actually happens in order to be able to, to participate. But um, hopefully I'm reachable for anybody who wants to discuss anything at any time. You know how to reach me via my email or select community or the website. And um, without further ado, I'll hand it back over to Manuel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, uh, and now I would like to, to pass down the, the word to Stan. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. It's uh, obviously a very important meeting for JECT because this is the first of its kind meeting and we are still learning how to do these things. Probably we do them in our schools, but we, we have never done this in such a huge uh, community. And from what I see until now, it is very well organized and uh, I will be very happy to stay until the end of the day and to see how it goes with all the sessions. Uh, Bruce said uh, a lot of important things, so I'm not going to repeat uh, all those things. I only want to uh, remind all of us, uh, actually I have already checked, uh, a lot of you have downloaded the files that I sent yesterday. Uh, so uh, 
those of you who didn't receive them, uh, maybe uh, will receive them today. Uh, these are the files for the Congress with the materials that uh, we will uh, need to discuss at the General Assembly, the first virtual General Assembly, but I will be learning from this meeting here how to do the General Assembly online, because uh, I expect that we will have at least 150, maybe 200 participants. This is a huge uh, challenge because most of those people will be in the different ends of the world. From what I calculated, it is 23 hours distance between our members in the two ends of the world. So for some of them will be probably early morning, for some of them will be late night, and some of them will be in the middle of the day. And by itself, this is a challenge, but also, the internet connection is always uh, problematic in different countries, it is different. Also, there are other uh, elements that can be uh, uh, considerably uh, challenging in, in this environment. So, I think that today's uh, conference will give answers to some of those challenges, and I will be listening very carefully to the answers. Obviously, in the next few months, we will have to uh, keep uh, doing our normal business in the same way. Uh, but I really hope that we will be able to see each other soon face to face. Because uh, in the last six months, I learned how important it is to see people face to face. Uh, otherwise, we just uh, sometimes even get bored with things like this. And we say, oh, come on, I'm tired of seeing all the same people every day and so, etc. But now it's completely different. Uh, of course, it is the forbidden fruit. I mean, everything that uh, we lack, we want it uh, back again, or we want it more, etc. So without uh, much more speeches, I want to wish you all a very good uh, session today. And... Uh, I really hope that uh, we will see each other, most of us at least, on the 13th of November at the General Assembly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stan. Uh, and now I would like to pass on to, to live. Yes, can you make me co-host in some way? You are now the co-host, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to see everyone. Uh, and uh, I'll just give you a short view of outside. I don't know. There's a lot of people that I haven't met. So my name is Leif. I'm the head of the uh, film and media department at Westerals at uh, Christiania University College in Oslo. And uh, today we were supposed to receive you all at the reception at the city hall uh, where the Nobel Peace Prize normally is handed over. And we should have a good session yesterday and we should uh, have an interesting discussion uh, or presentation today. But uh, luckily you're not here because if I just uh, give you a short glimpse of uh, the weather, it's, uh, it's pouring down and it's, uh, yeah, it's, really, it's really wet. So I hope it's not the same next year. So, um, it can be extremely nice and it can be extremely wet uh, in October here and I guess everywhere in, in Europe. Uh, I've, um, uh, I read through a lot of the work that we did and I looked through the papers and uh, I was thinking of how should we, um, in a relevant, relevant way, uh, present to you uh, a good perspective of how to uh, why you should all come to Oslo for a, 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 a meeting next year. How can we um, enforce the Nordic approach that we were discussing with all my Nordic colleagues and so on. But uh, I'll just do uh, a short presentation uh, going back a little to um, half a year ago. Uh, so I'll see if I can share my screen for uh, and then I'll see which uh, we'll do this and then I will um, uh, sorry hang on for a sec 
stop share uh, so that we will have the first slide. And will this work, I hope? Okay. Um, do you see now uh, as a full screen or do you see it as a, do, do you see all my other slides as well or is it? Yes, we do. It's not in, it's not in slide mode. There we go. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, this was sort of uh, uh, what, what we were supposed to have. We were going to have a conference in Oslo now in October with the topic impact and relevance. And uh, suddenly you can all discuss what is impact and what is relevance in, in a lot of new ways. Uh, but uh, uh, going back in March, uh, we had a short presentation. Norway was far out in a remote corner of the world and not really caring about um, the corona. Uh, but a lot of Norwegians went to Austria for uh, vacations. Uh, in February, so uh, everyone brought it back. And um, I went to Prague at uh, March 8th, uh, and I was the Czech live. Uh, 700 people, and uh, a lot of them had been skiing in Austria, according to Stenek. Um, two days later, I was um, at the um, opening of a Norwegian film, I'm chairman of a documentary company called uh, Up North. And um, this was the very last uh, screening at all at cinemas in Oslo. When we were on the stage, uh, the director of the uh, cinema came and said that we were actually supposed to clear the, the hall and everyone should leave. But since everyone was seated, uh, they went through this last screening. So we had a premiere as the last thing before everything closed. And uh, I'm on stage there and uh, I don't know if you noticed, but four out of those five people had Corona two weeks later. I was the lucky one. Um, so it was pretty close. Um, they were uh, sick for a couple of weeks, everyone else. Uh, March 11th, we had a, a sit down with the team, uh, also with Frederik, who's uh, attending now for the meeting. We went through all the different classes and um, uh, tried to figure out what will happen if we have to close down. And I don't know if you noticed the word catastrophe is uh, in the middle there. Uh, it's all the warning signs and the, all the things that could go wrong. Um, and that was a terrible instant for all the students. I remember we had to call a crew that was far out in the forest shooting in the winter, had made a nice cast of kids um, that was, uh, uh, had two more days of screening and they were sort of saying, that, could we please continue? And we said, no, the government has told us that you have to come back. And they asked, can you please forget us? And we said, no, sorry, you have to come back. And they were crying and uh, it was their bachelor movie. And it's sort of, okay, we just have to close down. Oof, go back home and um, hand in all the equipment. Uh, so this was the new normal. Uh, meetings, meetings like this that we're doing now. Uh, this is the team of... Uh, um, at, at the faculty uh, with the, my Dean Jörn at the, in the corner. And home office was the new normal. And uh, I, I don't remember, I don't know how many cat pictures or images or uh, colleagues that have a cat coming, walking through the screen um, that has been going on. Um, and we had a meeting as Bruce described pretty soon on what we will do with this conference that we were supposed to have in October. Is it possible to go through with it. And uh, we quite immediately decided that, okay, we'll just do this flip from 20 to 21. And it's uh, the same week. And uh, uh, we'll just uh, restart everything when we feel it's relevant to do it. So still the same topic, still the same more or less agenda. Uh, we still uh, maintain the same hotel agreement and so and so. 
and uh, it's not really dramatically uh, a dramatic thing to us at all that we just change um, the dates uh, actually lead us to uh, have more uh, time to prepare which could be good but uh, still i feel like quite uncertainly about are we going to meet in this way uh, in a year's time and how the situation around the world will be but as it is now this is the plan and there's something good about it because uh, our new faculty uh, that is uh, this was uh, half a year ago it will be finished so that we can host you in uh, the new facility which will be nice in uh, august september next year so that's that's a good thing and um, uh, still I have to remind myself of good things that happened. We did win, this is old news, that we did win a BAFTA last year, we did win an Oscar last year, and still, thing, uh, still things are okay. But we also win an Oscar in 2020, so uh, we, we're quite happy. Sorry, Stan, we, uh, you were in the final with your students, but we win a, a, an Oscar with the... Uh, in the documentary category. Last year was the shorts uh, category. So, so there's some good news around. Uh, things are running as usual or as unusual. Uh, I went to the campus a month after everything was closed and the university paper uh, was there. In, in Norwegian it says cancelled. And um, this was actually the standing alone on the newsstand in an empty campus for three months. Um, quite an iconic uh, image to me uh, that things were cancelled. And in the bottom it says the semester, question mark. And of course the whole semester was more or less cancelled as a normal thing. So business as unusual. Uh, the building was empty. I had to go through there in Easter to try to do some uh, photos to... Uh, Cheer up both the staff and students. I'm not really sure if they, <laughs> they thought it was a good idea, but uh, and I made a, a home office for my wife, which is um, a greenhouse. There's good things about business as unusual. Uh, Drive-in cinema was suddenly a thing in Norway, it would never happened before, which is uh, strange. At the uh, remote parking lot just up the road here, and this is the television tower in the background. So, um, uh, and we started off the semester again now in August after um, trying to uh, get back on track. We have kind of one or two months delay on everything in production. Uh, and instead of uh, receiving all the students inside the building, we were out on a big square and I was shouting my head off uh, trying to uh, say welcome in a very nice way <laughs> in distance, which was um, horrible, probably both for the students and me. But uh, the students are confident, uh, they understand the situation. Uh, we haven't had much complaints. Uh, we have had um, regulations on how to work on set. Uh, of course, sometimes they become too eager but uh, we haven't really had uh, any big problems. The big problems was with the sound department that need, really needed the equipment. So, um, so they were um, behind track, but now are, are gaining up again. And then um, uh, we've had two incidents with um, Corona positive students. And uh, according to the authorities, we have had uh, good control of the conditions and uh, the classes. So only a small group of students has been taken into quarantine in those two incidents that we've had. Uh, and then uh, uh, we could go uh, on online uh, teaching or not for, for, for those students. So it's, uh, it is business as unusual and it will continue to be business as unusual. Okay, and then what we will... Um, I could uh, discuss with you the topic, uh, the importance of uh, uh, teaching students what is relevant and what will be um, necessary for us uh, and for them to have an impact both in the audience and society. And the, the, so 
much of the topic is still there, but I think we have to rethink and uh, think about uh, how the things will be done also with the experiences from today's sessions and from the discussion I think we will have with the board of select uh, as soon as possible to sort of just say, say, are we back on track or are there uh, new tracks to be laid out uh, or um, when will we decide that uh, we will do this? Uh, I, I, we have our perspectives from here. It's we're in the safe haven. Uh, we've had the same amount of students. The Norwegian economy is still running good, and it's. I can't really uh, predict and understand how this situation is to all the rest of the world and other countries also, even in Europe. So we need the feedback and um, uh, uh, to understand what what would what will be right for us to do uh, in October next year. But uh, the plan is to host you all in October next year between fourth and eighth of October. Um, but of course, it can. Uh, <laughs> What, what will happen? Will it be 21 or will it ever be? But I hope this is the right answer and not this one. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, I wouldn't need to go too far into uh, what to do, but uh, the schedule that we made, I think we have to rethink a little and also see how um, we can share uh, a physical event with people that are not able to attend the physical events. But I think as Stan also said that everyone is getting bored with <laughs> Zoom meetings and they really have to be value for money. Um, so the importance of networking and meeting uh, is going to be stronger and stronger. I think there has to be strong content in the conference and there has to be value for money because not only is this affecting uh, people's willingness or uh, ability to travel, but also the economy for many schools around. Uh, this is um, difficult and uh, we have to argue uh, that uh, showing up uh, at a conference will be value for money, not only for the participants, but for the schools that they represent. So um, we hope that uh, we will see you all in Oslo with no virus and only trolls uh, next year. Uh, I think uh, as ever, uh, we're always looking ahead and uh, trying to focus on the students. I must say that I'm looking forward to the presentations today. Uh, I know that my staff uh, has been working tremendously hard and uh, has been extremely committed to uh, give the students a fair and valuable um, education in the situation that we are in. But I really fear for the uh, future for the students and I also fear for the impacts of uh, the situation and how they will tear out or be worn out by by the, the strange working conditions they are in and um, uh, in every uh, forum that I uh, attend with more sort of um, media politically or educational politically um, uh, agendas I really argue that we should um, look specially into how we can support um, our students uh, and their way into the industry uh, both this year and next year and probably for a couple of years to come. I know that the Norwegian industry was um, going back on tracks but uh, and has had a sort of everyone who's really been taken care of um, the staff in, 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 in the productions, but uh, now a lot of the big companies uh, due to the rising numbers have had to send people back home and it's very difficult for them to bring in new talent when they really can't keep up um, the business for the existing talent that are in the industry. So my concern is <laughs> much more the students than, than 
sorry to say, I think some of my staff is also here, but I'm much more concerned about the students than, than I am of the staff, but the staff need to be uh, appreciated and uh, taken care of in this extreme difficult uh, situation as well. So, um, well, with that said, I, I really hope that uh, I'll have to go back here and uh, say that uh, I do hope that we uh, see you all in uh, Oslo in 2021 in October and that uh, everyone is uh, healthy and things are back on track and the need to meet uh, will be so strong that we really uh, get together. I see there's been some um, things in the chat. I don't know if that's for me or it's just uh, greetings to everyone. Um, looking forward, that's good. Um, and uh, as you said, Pre Bruce, that um, yeah, the major issue is that we can't predict what could have had an impact for the next year is quarantine requirements and uh, everyone, yeah. Okay, so is there any, I'll stop my sharing and then uh, go back to uh, plenary presentation. I um, think I'll finish with this. I really, I'm still glad that we uh, were uh, uh, offered the possibility to host everyone. And um, I still hope people are able to come. And if you're not coming all together in a uh, big group, uh, you are all welcome one by one, uh, uh, whenever it's possible. So uh, hope to see you all physically and uh, yeah, thank you for. Okay, live, thank you very much for your for your presentation. You will, you've already given us a flavor of the discussion today. So how did schools cope with the, with the situation? Um, I'll just briefly outline the, the program for today and how we uh, devise the, the, the day. So basically we launched the call for papers and we got uh, a lot of interesting proposals and we tried to divide them by uh, some sort of topics. So in the morning, we will deal with the challenges that schools face during this, uh, this period. So more broader uh, presentations on uh, the issue of film education in the context of a pandemic like the one we are living in. We'll only have two of the three foreseen presentations because unfortunately our colleagues, uh, our colleague coming from Spain is sick, so she won't be able to present. So we'll only have two of the, the three foreseen presentations and we will start at uh, 10 a.m. Portugal, 11 a.m. Uh, uh, Central European time with the morning panel. We will leave, since we only have two of the three foreseen presentations, I think that will also leave more uh, room for discussion and reflection. So uh, that will be the morning panel. And then in the afternoon, we organize two uh, panels on more specific, uh, uh, three panels on more specific topics. So two focusing on the actual teaching in a context like this, one panel uh, focusing more on uh, uh, issues like uh, location, uh, uh, scouting, uh, production in a context like this. Life just mentioned the issue of security. Bruce also mentioned the issue of security. I think different schools have different interesting examples on how they reacted to a situation like this and on the, how they are preparing the, the new year that has just started. Then uh, in the 3 p.m. panel, we will move to the flipped classroom. So how do we deal with a classroom that uh, uh, is virtual in, in many senses? And how do we as teachers react to uh, and adapt ourselves to an environment like this one? And then we will end the day hopefully with some ideas for the future, also reflecting on the opportunities the, the crisis brought and also the success stories. I would just like to, to mention that I also think that uh, there are opportunities in this, in this context. Yesterday, we had our regional uh, meeting of JECT and one of the things that we highlighted was that the pandemic allowed JECT to do a lot of savings because actually we did no traveling for meetings and so forth. So uh, there are uh, many opportunities in a context like this, but also there are also some challenges. So 
I think we will start today uh, uh, and end the day, hopefully, with a positive note on this, uh, uh, on this situation. Uh, when we thought of this seminar, and because I'm an optimistic, I thought life that by now everything would be over. So I even thought that in the end we'll still go to Oslo. And, uh, and now I'm becoming a little bit more pessimistic. And the main reason for that is that this pandemic had consequences that go way beyond our daily lives. And that's what makes it at the same time so interesting. It seems that we are kind of living a defining era in time, but no one actually knows what's coming afterwards. So it's, it's, it's also kind of interesting as a moment of speculation because it allows for all types of speculation. I don't know in your own countries, but here in Portugal, people love to speculate. It's a country of opinion makers. Everyone has an opinion about everything. So I've never met so many people that are experts in virus, so many people that are experts in health policies and so forth. Uh, but for some particular reason, no one seems to be a, an expert on how to do artistic practice-based education in a context like this. How do you educate people when you actually don't meet that people face to face? How do you teach men? How do you teach them the practical components of the craft? How do you interact with them and discuss a film? Uh, uh, Life just mentioned the, the the example of the drive-in cinema in in Oslo. We had uh, a terrible experience with our own theater. We were just starting to do public uh, screenings in our own theater. And we had to cancel everything. And it was, I would say that of all this, it was probably the most devastating momentum because we had really kind of planned a, a program for the entire year. We thought the university would have an impact in society, talking of impact and relevance. Uh, and the last film we screened was uh, a Tarkovsky film. And already the panic was total. So no one actually went to the screening. It was a very depressive, depressive moment. Uh, um, and I think that one of the things that we will definitely have to discuss as school and as educators is how are we going to convince people not to be afraid? Because one of the things that really puzzled me was that I initially I thought that the students wouldn't be afraid, but that's not at all true. At least in our own experience, the students are one of the most vulnerable groups for many reasons. So besides the pedagogical and didactical consequences of all this that we are going to talk today during the day, there are also much broader social consequences that I think that none of you, none of us can still completely understand and devise. So we'll also do a little bit of futurology today. We'll also speculate about the future. And I think that's interesting because that's also what academics are supposed to do. So I wish you all a very good session today. We will now make a 15 minutes break for coffee and networking. We'll all meet in the lobby and everyone can talk about their most recent adventures. And then we'll meet again online, uh, somehow regretting not having the opportunity for that uh, networking, 15 minutes networking. So I will be the one hosting the, the morning panel. Ellie, uh, Bo will, uh, from the board object, will host the first, um, sorry, Lindsay will host the first panel in the afternoon. And just remember that's 1 p.m. in the UK, 2 p.m. Central European time. Uh, then Ellie will host uh, at 3 p.m. the flipped classroom panel. And Pido will host the last panel at 4 p.m. And then uh, the entire board will come together around 5 for the wrap up. Uh, and uh, we hope to to see you all virtually during the day. Uh, and we hope this seminar will somehow uh, help us in also in coping with the pandemic in terms of networking and keeping our organization alive. So thank you very much. Uh, we won't stop the session, so we will resume it at uh, uh, in exactly 10 minutes at uh, 10 a.m. Okay, 10 a.m. Portugal. 11 a.m. Central European time. Thank you very much, everyone, and I'll see you all in a couple of minutes. Thank you very much to Bruce for being awake at these hours <laughs> and for being with us. I'm really, thank you very much, Bruce, for your availability. And please go to sleep. You look very tired, so go to sleep. And it was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Stan, and thank you, Life, for the wonderful introduction. And I'll see you all in 10 minutes. Okay? 
Bye-bye, everyone.